I'm going to show you five useful Discord features that you probably aren't using, but I also have a bonus six feature which is completely useless. So the first feature that we're looking at is called Quick Switcher. Now I know you guys, I know my audience, you're probably in five bajillion e-girl Discord servers, whether it be Pokimane, Valorant, not Rocket League, e-girls don't exist, but for me personally my favorite e-girl is Nick A30. And you might have noticed that my Discord servers are completely all over the place and not organized in nice little folders. Now you could take the the time out of your precious day sorting through all these Discord servers, but instead, just press the control key and the K key, and you get Quick Switcher. Now when you open up Quick Switcher, you can see the previous channels that you've been in, channels that you've been mentioned in, and if you scroll down to the very bottom, unread channels. Now to be honest, this visual part isn't very useful. The part that I like the most is where would you like to go, where you can type in whatever you want. You want to go to no text to speech? Well, you just type it in, press enter, kaboom, right there, baby. I'm going to have to remove that invite link or you guys are going to join the server again. But there's also an issue with this, because what if I wanted to go to the no text-to-speech Discord server? Well, there's two options, and that's where you start using these modifier keys. So if you use the at sign, you can pick username, so it makes it extremely easy. I want to find the real Pokemon. Hey, look, it's actually this one right here. Is this the real Pokemon? Oh. But you can also do text channels. Of course, there's an e-girl selfie channel. <laughs> you can use exclamation mark for voice channels, which is probably... I'm just going to search up Kitten, it's probably going to show up. But voice calls do show up if you actually put in something that is valid, and finally you have the star symbol which allows you to search for servers. So if you wanted to go to the no text-to-speech server, you would need to use the star. If I say asterisk, it might be a little too confusing, and I might start saying asterisk. <laughs> but trust me, just try this out for a day and you will navigate Discord a whole heck of a lot faster, and you won't need to worry about organizing all of these servers, and instead you can just throw them in folders like I do. Is there really a hot man inside of this? Oh yes, there was. Now this second useful feature is called the Launchpad, and this is for people that don't use Discord on their little desktop, they use it on their cellular apparatus, their iPhone or Android phone. I feel like a boomer saying that. But on your phone, if you have the new Discord UI, which everyone hates, if you go to your settings, which is on the bottom right, well, you go to your profile, then you go to settings on the top right. Oh, hard to navigate. Then what you need to do is you need to scroll down and go to Advanced. And when you open up Advanced, just turn on Developer Mode, you'll thank me later, but you should see this experimental features. If you don't, sucks to suck, but a lot of of you will see this. And if you scroll down, there is a launch pad. Now there are three different, I really don't know how to count. There's four settings that you get to pick from. There's disabled, then there's pull tab, which if you enable it, it shows you this little tab in which if you press it, you open up the launch pad. Now before we get into the launch pad, there's a couple more settings. There's right edge gesture, which basically you need to swipe from the right edge of your phone and it'll open up the launcher. And then there's full screen gesture where you can literally swipe right from anywhere and it'll open up the launcher. Now, if you're fortunate enough to not have the memory of a gold this might look a little bit familiar. In fact, this is the quick switcher. I can search no text to speech, and I'm gonna have to look through every single one of those results to make sure I don't leak anything, but it's the same thing as quick switcher. And you also get this notifications tab, which is really helpful if people mention you on random Discord servers. Now, the third feature I'm gonna show you is called look through your gosh darn privacy settings, because people on r slash Discord app love complaining. And this person is specifically complaining about how there's random people on their home screen. In fact, if I go to my home screen here, you can see my friend no text to speech is in a voice channel, but this random fella here, I don't know who he is. I don't want to see him in this active now tab. I only want to see my friends. Well, there is a setting to change to make it where your friends will only show up in this active now tab, and it requires you going to your user settings. And quick little tip here, you can actually right click the user settings and you can just pick directly which one you want. We are going to go to privacy and safety. Now, when you click on it, what you want to do is you want to scroll down and disable this use data to customize my Discord experience. It's going to say blah, 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 who cares, click yes, I'm sure. Then, when you press on escape, you will see that, whoa, magically he's gone. But if people don't disappear, you might need to restart your Discord, whether it be refreshing the page or pressing Control and R. Now, this next feature is something that I use every single day. It's hotkeys. Uh, let me just move out of this for a second. But in Discord, there are a ton of hotkeys. If you press Control and this slash button, you get a lot of hotkeys. Now, I know you guys, you don't want to see me read this, and you can't read yourself, and this is way too much garbage. You're not even remembering any of this crap. So that's why instead we're going to take a different route. Go to your user settings, scroll down and go to keybinds. Now what you want to do is click add a keybind and there is one that you you just need to do it. People that don't have this keybind make me want to scoop my eyeballs out with an ice cream scoop. You click on action, you scroll down and you press toggle mute and set it to some sort of hotkey. For example, I pick mouse four. Now this is revolutionary. Imagine you're talking in a voice channel and uh, your mom comes in to start yelling at you. This happens a lot with my friends. All you need to do is press that hotkey and kaboom, you're muted.
muted, and I don't have to hear the domestic dispute in the background. But it doesn't stop there. Add another keybind, and this one is Toggle Deafen. Now I, I set this also to another mouse keybind. So let's say I'm playing Tarkov, and my friends are yapping the most complete garbage nonsense on the planet. Well, I press the keybind, I'm deafened. And finally, the last keybind of them all. It's Toggle Screen Share, okay? But this one is does exactly what you want it to. You add it to some sort of keybind, and when you're playing a game deep in the zone, you press the keybind, and instantly, you start streaming. Now, for some reason that keybind isn't working, you want to scroll down to your settings, go to Registered Games, and make sure Discord is detecting that you're playing a game. For example, when I play Rocket League, League... I don't play League of Legends. I actually don't play any of these games. I only play Rocket League. I'm chronically depressed. Now, my final useful feature before I show you that one bonus useless one is turning off the ping sound, and it is as easy as going to your notifications in your settings, scroll down, and you can see sounds. Now, you can turn off all notification sounds in Discord, which is phenomenal if you're recording. But just a quick warning, it also turns off the incoming ring noise, so you won't know if people are calling you, so I would highly suggest you just turning off this message sound, which means you won't have to hear pings anymore, but you can still hear when you use those hotkeys. Anywho, for some weird reason, if you're still watching, here is the sixth bonus tip, which is completely useless. But when you send an emoji on Discord, it has this size. Do you want to make your emoji smaller? Then put a hashtag in front of it, and then send the emoji. You want to make it even smaller? Put two hashtags in front of it. Oh, what's that? Smaller is better? No one's ever said that before, but you can put in three hashtags and press enter, and now the emoji is tiny. I told you this was going to be useless. Anywho, next week I'm going out camping in negative 20 degrees Celsius weather, so if I don't show up after a couple weeks, just assume I'm dead, okay? Bye-bye, I love you. Mwah.